Hey guys, in this video we'll be downloading and running this .NET Core 3.1 API that supports JWT auth with refresh tokens on our local machine, then testing it with Postman, and finally hooking it up with an example uh, Angular 9 application to see it running with a SPA application. The tutorial with the steps that I'll be going through I'll link to in the video description so you can follow along. If your local machine isn't set up for developing .NET Core applications, pause the video and you can go through these steps here and install these tools. There's also uh, detailed posts with a video to show you through the steps on how to do that there. Okay, let's get started. We'll download our uh, code for our .NET Core API from GitHub. Jumping over to GitHub. There's a couple of ways you can get the code, either with uh, a git clone or you can simply download the zip file. I'll just download the zip file. And jumping into downloads. Let's see, I've done some testing here, so it's already there. And I'll extract the zip file there and extract it straight into the downloads folder. Okay, we can see we have our code there, and also if I open up VS Code and open that folder. Here we can see all of our all of our project code there. Okay, let's jump back to the browser and see what the next step is. All right, I'll open up a command line and run .NET run to start the application. That's a Windows S and CMD to start a command prompt. And enter, well first navigate to the downloads folder and the project folder. And enter .NET run. And you can see there now that the, app, the API has started and is listening on port 4000. Now let's see what the next step is. All right, we'll jump into testing with Postman. Now I don't have Postman installed yet, so I'll download it at getpostman.com. Select the API client and download the app. Open up that file when it's finished downloading. And we'll skip this section. We'll skip signing in by clicking down here. And now we're ready to go with Postman. Okay, jumping back to the browser. And how to authenticate to our API. So I'll open up a new request tab by clicking the plus button. Change the request method to post. Enter the address to the authenticate route. Copy that there. And enter that there. Uh, select the body tab and raw. Change the type to JSON for the body type, and then enter the username and password, which we can copy from here. There's a test user hard coded in the API with username test and password test. So enter that, hit send. You can see that's worked. We've got a response with our user details and a JWT token. We'll make a copy of that token that we can use later. I'll just open up the notepad and paste it in there. Okay, jumping back to the next step. Here's the screenshots, which are what we saw. So uh, we can also check that we received a cookie back containing our refresh token. 
let's see, cookies one, and there's our refresh token with our expiration date. And how to refresh a token with Postman. So we've performed our previous authenticate step to get that refresh token cookie. Now we'll go through the same steps. We'll open up a new tab and a post request, and this time we'll be posting to the refresh token path and it'll be with an empty body. So jumping over to here, we'll open up a new tab, post requests to the refresh token path with an empty body. Um, at this, with this request, because we have the cookie in our, in our browser, the refresh token cookie, that'll be sent with the request, which will uh, make the request successful and it'll send us back a new JDBT token you can see there, as well as a new refresh token that will replace the old one. So actually, this is the JWT token we want, the previous one. Um, the previous one will still work for the, until it expires, but this is the new one, so we'll use this one with the tests going forward. Okay. Again, there's the screenshots, so that step has worked. Next, let's make an authenticated request with our JWT token to get a list of all users. So this will be a get request to the users route, and we'll be setting the auth authorization header to the JWT token. So I open up a new route to users a get request and just before I set the authorization so if I set it with no token and hit send you can see I get a 401 unauthorized response if I grab our token from over here just copy that paste it in there send and there we get a 200 OK response and all of the users in the system, an array, which is just the one test user, which, uh, as I mentioned, is preloaded into the system for testing. OK, let's jump back to the next step. OK, we want to fetch all of our users' refresh token. Now this is for auditing. Um, the list of refresh tokens for a user when uh, to check if there hasn't been any unauthorized access or any unusual activity, if you want to check uh, if any tokens need to be revoked, then um, you can check all of the authorization activity for a user by seeing their refresh tokens. So if we use the same get request, we type the ID of the user, which is one, and then refresh tokens and we'll see all of this uses refresh tokens which is the first refresh token from when we authenticated we can see that this one is no longer active because it was replaced by our new, ref new refresh token when we refreshed it so this first token was revoked when it was rotated out for the new refresh token so currently we have uh, one active refresh token it also records the IP address, which currently is the local IP address of, uh, of our machine, which is also for auditing purposes. Uh, when a token is revoked, it also records um, the IP address that revoked the token and the date and time that it was revoked. Right, moving on to the next step. Let's, uh, let's finally revoke our refresh token so it can no longer be reused to refresh, uh, to, to get new JWT and new refresh tokens. So doing this, uh, what do we got here? So it's the, po it's, uh, we'll be making a post request to the user slash revo revoke token URL. Copying that URL. Make a new request, posting to revoke token. This needs to be an authenticated request, so we'll need to have 
our JWT token, which Postman already remembers, so it's pre-filled it in there. And the body is set to raw and JSON. And then we'll set the body to the token that we want to revoke. If we go back to the tokens, we can copy that here. And paste that there. And if we submit that request, we can see that the token is revoked. If we go back and we fetch our fresh tokens again, we can see that it is no longer active and was revoked by our IP. Uh, the reason this request still works is because our JWT token is valid for 15 minutes, so it will work until it expires, um, but the refresh token that we had can no longer be used to get new JWT tokens. So our refresh token cookie, so if I jump back to our refresh token request and try to use that, use our cookie that we've just revoked to get a new JWT token, it will say 401 unauthorized with invalid token. So when you revoke a token, a user will be able to use their last valid JWT token until it expires, but that will only be for the, the expiration time that you've set, and in this case, we've set it to 15 minutes. Okay. Also, with the revoke token route, you can hit that route without passing it, the token in the body. It can be sent uh, with, with an empty body, in which case um, the refresh token cookie will be revoked. If, you, if the request contains a cookie and a token in the body, the, one in the, the token in the body will take uh, priority over the one in the cookie. Okay, that's all the testing with Postman done. Moving on to running an Angular app with the with the JWT Refresh Tokens API. All right. Again, there is a full details of the Angular 9 client app in a separate tutorial over here. But for now, we just want to see a client app running with our Refresh Tokens API. So we're going to just go through these steps and uh, spin it up on our local machine. So jumping over to GitHub again. I'll download the code, <coughs> code in a zip. Extract it to the downloads folder. Then opening up a new command window. Navigating over to the Angular client code directory, running npm install to install all of the dependent packages. While that's happening, let's jump over to see the next step, which is to remove the fake backend, which, so by default, the Angular app runs with a fake backend, not with a real backend API, so we'll disable that so it uses our .NET Core API that we have running. We can do that while that's running, so we'll open up a new Visual Studio Code window. Open up our Angular application, and jump down to source, app, app module.ts, and we can comment out or simply delete the fake backend. And now when we start it, it will run with a real backend. Um, I don't think you need to worry about that underlining. I think it's because it's still installing the dependent packages, so they haven't finished downloading yet. 
Okay, once all those packages are, in, are installed, you can run npm start to start the Angular app. And that's a, it'll automatically launch, so you'll see it in our browser if we open our dev tools. And see that on load it attempts to do a silent refresh if we have a uh, a refresh token cookie in our browser which we don't at the moment so that's what that error message is so it's nothing to worry about and if we enter our username and password test test see that we have sent an authenticate request Post request to the API, to our API, users authenticate with our test test, username and password, and receive, we've received back our JWT token, as well as our refresh token cookie here. And so silently in the background, the Angular app has uh, started a timer to automatically use that refresh token to get a fresh JWT token before the um, the 15 minutes is up when the JWT expires. Uh, also, this uh, users list from the secure API endpoint has been fetched using our JWT token in the authorization header here. All right, I think that's it. That's uh, testing our .NET Core JWT token, uh, JWT and refresh tokens API with uh, Postman and with an Angular app on our local machines. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Um, if you did, please like or subscribe below. Cheers.